All right, everyone, this is the weekly press conference with offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach Jake Spavital prior to week 10's trip to number six, Oregon, this weekend on Saturday. Uh, we'll go ahead and get questions started with Jeff Ferrado from Cal Sports Report. Jake, how you doing? Good, Jeff. How you been? Good. Um, we, we really got to see, uh, it seemed like for most of the game the other day, the first time how your offense can click when, when you've got Jaden going and you've got Fernando playing well. Um, can you talk about that? But also then in the fourth quarter, you didn't have Jaden and how that changes things um, to not have the threat that he provides. Yeah, you know, um, we've talked a lot over like really like the last seven, eight weeks about the rhythm of our offense. When we get that first first down and when we get the run game clicking, it's going to actually open up a lot of the RPOs. And uh, this was one of the first games where I got to call a lot of run and uh, we were throwing the ball a lot. You know, because Jaden was hitting the runs very efficiently, which was adding more guys to be more aggressive into the box to stop the run, which was allowing more one on ones. So that's when you got to see Tron open up a little bit. Jeremiah got a few one on ones as well, and same with Taj. Uh, and, and that's what makes our offense special at times is when we get that run game going, and then it allows for the reads to be a lot easier so you can have those one on one matchups with the RPO. So uh, it felt good uh, to get that moving uh, the way we normally do. Uh, or how we've shown that in the past before uh, with the, the offenses that I've ran. But uh, you look at uh, Jaden, though, with Jaden not being in there in the fourth quarter, they know that does take a significant hit. You know, Jaden's a very uh, dynamic player and uh, obviously a very explosive player. If you look at how that run game was hitting, especially in that first quarter, the explosive nature of uh, his run game, especially playing at a high tempo, uh, Jaden was uh, very successful. I, I think, what do you have, over 150 yards rushing, and a lot of that happened really in the first half. Uh, and uh, when you eliminate that, uh, you know, we got to be searching around. Like, you know, uh, I, Isaiah went out uh, in the game as well, so we had to get down to our third, fourth, fifth string backs, uh, which was surprising uh, to me was Jay Will when he went in the game, Justin Williams-Thomas when he went in. Uh, I thought that was pretty awesome to see a kid that hadn't even played much uh, step up to that moment in the fourth quarter uh, and hit an explosive play right there at the end of the game. Uh, to get us into striking distance, so then Jet, uh, Javen Thomas ends up, you know, putting it in on a screen, which, uh, you know, we're really shooting all of our bullets right now with all of our personnel. Um, but you know, not having Jaden uh, does take off the edge uh, just of how well that offense was clicking in the first half. You know, we had to move and shake a little bit more when we got into that third and fourth quarter. When you watch uh, Jaden actually pulling away from USC athletes. Uh, you don't see that all the time. What's right. that like for you to watch that? Yeah, it's that. That was the first time I truly got to compare it. Uh, you know, because that long touchdown he had about sixty yards. Uh, you just saw how he separated himself in, and uh, they're a very talented team, as you know as well. And uh, just to see the separation that he got when he is out there in the open field just shows you how dynamic and explosive a player Jaden is. All right, thanks. Thanks, Jeff. All right, we'll go to Jake Curtis with Cal Sports Report. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to rain uh, in Eugene this week. Uh, how does that affect things? Uh, Justin talked a little bit about how you're preparing for that during the week. Yeah, you know, I don't think there's uh, any true way to prepare for it, except, you know, like just start dousing the footballs with uh, with water. And, and Fernando's been, you know, uh, working a wet ball drill really the entire day. You know, all like all practice, he's going to be doing that. And, uh uh, just, uh, you know, you might as well make it extremely hard in practice and hopefully that the weather uh, is not as bad when it gets into the, into the game. But uh, what I've always done with elements is uh, you just really have to see in the current moment on how we're handling it. You know, are the receivers catching the ball? Is the uh, is the quarterback in the exchange? Are we handling that at a, at a pretty efficient way? Um, because if we're going to be throwing it around and we're not executing in the past game, then we don't need to be doing that as much. We need to get to more... Uh, kind of misdirection type stuff in the run game and just be working it from there. So we're working all the angles of that uh, just to be ready for the elements, uh, not just the, the weather of the rain, but also the element of the crowd uh, and how loud it's going to be as well in that stadium. So uh, it's definitely been on Fernando's mind. It's been on the coaches' minds too. And, um, you know, we're going to be repping it a lot this week. But you, know, you never know until you get out there. I've been in a lot of times where we prepared for really a monsoon game and you get out there and it's it's just kind of misting and it's not raining. So you can never predict the weather, but we're going to be ready for it. All right, we'll go back to Jeff Barato. Jake, uh, their run defensive numbers are really, really good. And I'm wondering how much of that is a function of the fact that teams don't run against them much because they get way behind and have to throw. <laughs> but I wonder what you see when you look at their run defense. 
I think they're just I think they're very sound in what they do. Obviously, they're very well coached and uh, I think they're they're very long and big. I, I that's what I see the most. I think that's it's one of the bigger fronts that we've seen in a while, and uh, uh, I think they're very good at stopping the run. They're very tough to double team. They get they get off double teams extremely well. Um, you know, I, you look at the rush defensive stats are great, and then because teams do have to throw it a lot because they are behind the majority of the time. But I think their overall numbers defensively are great across the board. You know, I think this is uh, arguably one of the best defenses in our league. I think they're number two statistically in the Pac-12 uh, behind UCLA. Uh, but you know, it, it's going to be a very tough challenge for us. We're going we're going to have to get a lot of misdirection, and we're going to have to get them thinking a little bit, and uh, because we know that they're talented across the board right now. On a different topic, he talked about JV and Thomas, and, and he caught the touchdown pass, and you've used him in a lot of different ways. But he had a couple of runs into the line that didn't go very well, and I'm wondering, is that that part of his game that is still working on, or, or, is, or is that just a small sample size and, and you have confidence that he can he can do those things? No, I have confidence in uh, Javen. He, he's done a great job. Uh, he shows up to work every single day. You know, he's a, he's a freshman, you know, and uh, – I think he's got past the nerves of his initial games that he's gotten into. He's starting to get in the end zone. I think he's got two touchdowns now in the year, maybe more, I think it's two. But uh, uh, he's just – he's gaining more confidence as the season's been going on. And, and uh, we know what he's capable of doing. I think he's going to be a very good all-purpose back. I can, you can split him out and do some things out on the perimeter and hit him with, like, you know, the gadget plays. But also he can run in between the tackles as well. So, uh, you know, he's going to have to do it this week. He's going to have to grow up a little bit. But uh, uh, he's going to be ready for that challenge. Justin Williams Thomas had a, a short but effective uh, stint with you guys. Did he come out of the game feeling good? And are you ready to possibly use him more if you need to, or you, or you can? Yeah, we're ready to use him. We are. Um, you know, we got some doubtful guys in that room right now. Um, you know, we'll see how the the week progresses. But you know, I, I think he's uh, he's been a guy that Coach At has been doing a great job with in terms of. Uh, was hurt early, you know, and we've just been kind of staying the course with him. And AT's been working with him, uh, uh, very confident in his protection, very confident in him and, and all the routes that we do with the running backs, but also uh, uh, just our run game in general. Now, it's not perfect by any means, but, you know, he's he's going to be a guy that uh, we're going to have to count on, you know, especially if those other two guys aren't ready to go. Did Sweeney start, Sweeney start or did, was it Siwapia the other day? Uh, Vati started, yeah. Siwapia started, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're moving around a lot with that, with Wyckoff and, uh, and Bastion. You know, that's why you have a three-man rotation at the guard position. Uh, so you'll see a lot a lot of Bastion in this game as well. All right, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. All right, guys, if you have any final questions, go ahead and put it in the queue now. All right, we'll go to Steve Croner at the SF Chronicle. Good day, how you doing? Yeah, Steve, how you doing? Doing okay, thank you. I'll get, this, this is, I'll get to clear my throat. I'll be a little better. Um, I asked this to Justin. I got tongue tied. Hopefully, I'll get it clearer to you. Not as few people ask me, some Cal fans, you know, with Fernando playing so well the, these past three games, why was he not the starter at North Texas? And you, you can make a case, you know, like Aaron Rodgers. For three years, he sat behind Brett Favre. And maybe the three years sitting behind him made him as successful as he was once he got to play. But some guys, you know, once they get in, they're ready to go. How do you how do you uh, handle that kind of balance? Yeah, you know, you know, there's a. I'm saying we document everything, every single rep that they do, uh, every single throw. But by accuracy, what unit they're going with, the first unit, the second unit, the third unit. Uh, are they scoring in drives? Are they like, you know, what's the outcome of the drive is uh, is always documented. Uh, just the efficiency. Are they doing the right calls? Are they doing the right checks? Uh, and, uh, you know, you look at the fall camp in that battle, and we've talked about it before. You know, uh, I, I, at moments I thought Fernando was going to be the starter early in fall camp. You know, and then Sam really progressed, and so did Ben Finley. And uh, it was very, very close. And when you start making decisions, you know, uh, Sam had a very dynamic uh, ability and a, a skill set that is very tough to game plan for. Uh, ben has a lot of experience, has, has more experience than uh, Fernando. And uh, when we got into North Texas game and Sam went out, I thought Ben uh, – uh, would be the guy just based off of uh, throwing him in a moment like the first uh, play for Ben Finley this year was a third down and five uh, at North Texas, you know, and uh, 
uh, we knew that Ben, uh, just kind of his mentality, he's a gunslinger guy. He's going to go in there and he's going to go throw it around and uh, and not be a, uh, not have any nerves doing it. And I wasn't sure about that yet with Fernando. And, and uh, you know, when Fernando went in versus Oregon State, he was nervous at the beginning and he missed some throws early. And we knew that eventually once he kind of got past that initial uh, – uh, just the adrenaline rush and the butterflies of playing in your first college game, you know, he's going to be good. But the thing that has been separating Fernando is the consistency of who he is as a person. He shows up, his preparation is at a very high level, which you've heard a lot about that. And uh, he just kind of chips away and, and uh, he just kind of brought a comforting feel now to us, you know, where there was a lot of ups and downs of QB play early in the season, and now Fernando's been a guy that's just been kind of a, a calming factor for everybody, and uh, it's been pretty fun to watch him go. But, you know, you can always do the whole what-if deal, you know, uh, why aren't you starting him and all that. You know, I I, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of opinions, a lot of uh, meetings that are, are put into place, you know, to make the decision on who the starting quarterback. It's not just one person. It's also our team captains and our, our play, our, our leadership councils and our coaches and everything of that nature as well. So there's a lot of discussion. It's not just one person going, all right, he's the starter and go from there. But uh, really pleased with how Fernando's playing now. You know, it's uh, it's been a breath of fresh air, especially kind of what Jeff was talking about where – this is how the offense has looked, you know, and how it should look. And Fernando understands how it is, and, and he operates it at a high level. And I think uh, he's still making mistakes, but, you know, it's not as uh, uh, drastic, you know, as, as in the past, uh, you know, and and, and uh, we can still stay on course with our with our offense. So uh, very pleased with how Fernando's going right now. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Steve. All right, we'll go to Matt Moreno, arrivals. Uh, Coach Wilcox brought up the, the fan base and the crowd at Opson. Um, does that game at Utah pre prepare you guys a little bit better for what you're going to see this weekend? Yes. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, you never know with elements and weather and all that stuff, but we're expecting them to bring it like they always do. And and uh, it, it's something that uh, uh, you have to put a big emphasis on offensively because communication is at a premium with us. And, and uh, you don't want to go in there versus a team of this quality and have mistakes that are uh, from a communication standpoint. You know, uh, your mistakes should come from an execution standpoint. You know, and uh, that's something that uh, this fan base is uh, electric. It's going to be loud. It's going to be a, a great college football environment, and uh, we got to make sure that that's not going to be a factor on how we operate our plays. And then we'll go to Jeff Ferrado for a last question. Yeah, a couple quick ones, if I can, Jake. Uh, when we were talking to, to uh, Peter, he, he talked about that Kadu Oluave came over and worked at running back for a little while, a week or two maybe. Um, he thought after the Auburn game, when you guys were a little banged up at running back, um, what did you see from him there? Could you see him? I mean, has he got the skill set to be a college running back? Oh, well, Cade's a stud now. Like, selfishly, he came in, you know, as a defensive guy. I'm trying to get him over to the offensive side of the ball because I think he's that talented of a player. Uh, I didn't know, like, you know, we had this discussion um, before in, before fall camp started that if we got to this, you know, um, who would be maybe a guy that would have some running back skills. And, and Cade was the one that we had the discussions about early because uh, Justin Williams Thomas was out. You know, we had other guys like King DeRue ended up having an unfortunate, you know, injury and uh, Brian Cardwell. And, you know, so we were kind of limited before the season started. So we had the discussions about Cade and I uh, really enjoyed having Cade over on the offensive side and watching him compete and watching him play running back. But from a from another perspective of just watching him out there make plays versus USC, I thought that was pretty impressive for a true freshman to go in and and be that talented enough where I'm comfortable to play him at running back and then also be kind of in a in a role to play significant snaps on defense and special teams. And uh, on Sam, I know he's banged up right now and couldn't play anyway, I guess. But um, at yeah. some point, do you? Does he stay as your in, in your quarterback room, or do you use a guy with that much athletic ability in some other way, perhaps at wide receiver someday, or is that a discussion for down the road? Yeah, that's more of a discussion down the road um, for where we're at here at Cal. But uh, you know, if you watch his high school tape, you know, like I'm saying, he he was a pretty dynamic receiver in high school. I think he's a talented player. I think he can play a lot of different positions. You know, right now, you know, it's all about being a quarterback and. Uh, and now it's more about his health and making sure that he's getting back to being full strength. But, you know, he's capable of doing anything if you just kind of look at his tape and who he is. Thank you, sir.
But you, you see quarterbacks these days, if they're not number one, they go someplace else pretty quick. Do you have concerns about that? And have you had conversations with him so that he knows he's still a viable part of what you do? Yeah, and he knows. Like, I uh, haven't had really any of those discussions as of now. But uh, uh, I think he understands, like, how the, the nature of college football is. And he has transferred already. And, and uh, there's a lot of moving parts with that. But we've been more having more conversations about his health and just getting back to being full strength again. Good enough. Thank you. Thanks.